Okay, we had um, a lot of trouble in the assignment this week writing uh, trial-based functional analysis protocol, so I want to quickly review what that should look like, and then we're going to actually look at what each of those conditions would look like. So in your trial-based functional analysis, you're going to have usually a minimum of 10 trials, but it's going to depend on how many different conditions you're running and what the behavior actually looks like. But in a standard trial-based functional analysis, usually your conditions are going to be one minute long or two minutes long, and they're going to be run in pairs. It's best practice to always start with a control first and then move straight into your test. So let's imagine we're running two minute sessions. We would start with a two minute control and then go straight into a two minute test. But if challenging behavior, if your target behavior happens at any point in either your control or your test, you usually end that condition and move right into the next one. So this is kind of like the pairwise functional analysis that we talked about in class, but it's like a really brief version of it. And you usually run it in the natural context when, um, when the appropriate situation arises. So let's say you were going to do your demand condition. You might start with a two minute control where you're not placing any demands. And then as soon as that two minutes is up or, to, or the target behavior happens, you move into your test condition where you would start issuing demands and you would end that condition either after two minutes or after the first occurrence of target behavior. Um, so for this one, you're usually just scoring each trial a plus or minus either behavior happened or it didn't happen. And then at the end, you're gonna look at a percentage of how many trials had challenging behavior. So you'd be comparing how many trials of your test control had problem behavior versus how many trials of your test, um, your like your escape test had challenging behavior. Um, the only condition that's going to be a little bit different is your ignore condition and you can think about that as being kind of like your alone condition of a functional analysis so typically in the ignore condition we run two tests back to back we don't have a control and all that happens is you're just ignoring or the person is alone and for this one we always go the full two minutes and we don't do anything if challenging behavior happens we just pretend it didn't happen of course unless it gets dangerous so we're going to look at some of the basic conditions. We're going to run through just a really fast version of what an attention test in control would look like, tangible, demand, and ignore. So we're going to run through each of those really quickly. I'm just going to do a really shortened version of each. We'll do about 20 seconds of the control condition, and then we'll move right into the test condition. So I'll tell you what condition we're in. And the challenging behavior that we're going to be looking at is self-injurious behavior. Um, for the sake of keeping this easy, I'm not going to have any challenging behavior occur during the control conditions. You're only going to see it during the test condition. Okay, so I'll tell you what conditions we're running. We'll show you a little sample of what those are going to look like. Okay, up first we're going to do our attention condition. So remember, we're going to start with the control condition. I'm just going to put... Um, we're just going to go 20 seconds of control. When you hear the timer beep, that's when we're switching into the test trial. Okay, so in our control, he's got leisure items and he's going to get continuous attention from me. So first 20 seconds is control. Whoa, Joe, those squids are really cool. Oh, oh you got a popper. Winky, what else do you have? Oh, you got a hopper frog. That's really cool. And you got a race car. Wow, look at you. Whoa, look at that. The race car went through the tunnel. Okay, Joe, I gotta do some work. This is the test. And then we would end our condition because he engaged in problem behavior.
Okay, now we're in the tangible condition. So again, we're going to start with 20 seconds of control. He's got access to his favorite toys. And then we'll move right into the test condition. All right, Joe, you can play with your toys. And we're going to end the session there because he engaged in self-injury. Okay, now we're going to move into our escape condition. So in the first 20 seconds here, which is control, we're just going to be hanging out. There's no demands present. There's no leisure items. We're just hanging out. So we're going to start. And we're going to pretend 20 seconds has elapsed because you don't need to see us just sitting here doing nothing. And then I'm going to, we're going to move right into our demand condition. Okay, Joe, it's time to do some work. Stack the blocks. Stack the blocks like this. Stack the blocks. Okay, you don't have to. Okay, and he was right at the 20 seconds, so we remove the demands and then we also end the session. Okay, and then our last condition is going to be the ignore <coughs> condition. So again, this is like an alone condition of an FA. So he's going to ideally have nothing in front of him, no materials. There's nothing out on the table. Pretend this stuff isn't here. And I would start my first session at 20 seconds. And if any challenging behavior happens, I'm not gonna respond. And I'm gonna just be away from him during this. If I needed to be next to him for safety, I could be, but we treat this kind of like an alone session. So this goes 20 seconds, no matter what, unless he was hurting himself. So Joe, I'll be right back. You're gonna hang out right here. All right, so that was our first ignore session and then we would go right into another 20 second ignore session because remember we do two, essentially two test conditions back to back instead of a control test. So those would be all of our basic conditions for a trial based functional analysis. Now we saw challenging behavior happen in every one of our test conditions and we just saw it in our ignore condition too. So if we kept seeing that pattern, we might suspect either that behavior is multiply maintained or it might be automatically maintained because we also saw it happen when I wasn't there. So we'd have to keep on running this out to find out what was going on. But that's what those would look like. Remember, those aren't going to be back to back in real life. Those are going to happen throughout the day when it makes sense. So if we have playtime happening, that might be when we run a tangible condition. If we have work time happening, that might be when we run an escape condition. Um, if we have, I don't know, one-on-one -on -one time available with the teacher, that might be when we do our attention condition. So those are gonna happen throughout the day, not necessarily back to back, but our control and test conditions are always gonna be back to back. So remember, in real life, those would usually be either one minute or two minutes long. So ideally, every time you run this, you only need two minutes or four minutes, depending on how long your condition is. Okay, hopefully that helps everybody kind of visualize what the trial-based functional analysis looks like. If anybody wants to go back and revise their assignment from last week, feel free to email them to me um, and take a crack at rewriting your protocols that you have, protocols that you can use in the future. All right, that's it.